Welcome back everyone to another episode of The Road Shows Me. Today we are hiking the world famous Overland Track in Tasmania. So this is probably Australia's most famous hiking track. Uh, we're setting off for eight or maybe nine days into the wilderness here, going straight up into those mountains and then beyond. And uh, the weather here can be pretty intense. We've just heard that there's a lot of rain forecast for when we're about two days into the track. And the wind is gonna be coming from the south which means that it comes straight off of Antarctica. So this could get kind of interesting. I've got nearly the heaviest pack of my life. This will be the longest hike that Katie has ever done in her life. Uh, we are excited, we are amped. This is the world famous Overland Track. Here we go, come along for the adventure and I'll show you what it looks like all the way. Are we excited, Katie? Oh yeah. <laughs> excited and a little bit intimidated. Let's go for it. Alright, so we've been going maybe an hour and a half, lots of uphill as you've seen, and now we get a really good view. That big one right in front of us, that's called Cradle Mountain, and this is Cradle Mountain National Park. So for a good deal of the year, that thing has snow on top of it. Uh, yeah, it really does snow here, no doubt about it. And then to the right of it, that little individual one, that's Barnyard Bluff. And so for today, we're going to go to the base of Cradle, we'll drop our packs, go up to the summit, come back down again, and then we hike just a little bit past it. We're gonna go in behind it. And that's where our camping is for the first day today. So we've come, oh, I don't know, maybe a third of what we need to come for the day. And the weather, it's trying to rain, it's trying to hold off. It's gonna get interesting soon, but you can see these mountains are breathtaking. This is incredible. Okay, so we just dropped our packs and now we're heading towards the summit of Cradle Mountain. So we're trying to go up that guy right there. And it all says it's gonna take us two and a half hours, which is gonna make this a really long day. That would put us in camp pretty close to sunset, pretty close to like 8.30 or nine o'clock at night. So we'll see how we go. But uh, sure feels nice to walk without the pack on. I feel like I'm walking on the moon and I'm like springing. Even better than that though, I just ate one of my gummy worms. So we hiked in a whole bunch of different granola mix and you know, chocolates and candies and all the things to snack on. And uh, gummy worms have become my recent favorite. And so I just made a snap decision. I wish I had have not brought any other food and I should have just brought like 3000 gummy worms. And I'll just eat nothing but that for the rest of the hike. Unfortunately, that's not the case though. We have real food to look forward to tonight. But in the meantime, this is the view. This is what's in front of us. Let's see how long it takes us to get to the top of this thing. This is actually a lot more impressive than I thought it was going to be. First of all, the view is jaw dropping. And then the hike itself, this is actually officially the path. Um, yeah, it's getting hard to do one handed with the GoPro, but I'll see what I can do for you guys. This is great. 
So normally in Australia are pretty big on having like signs and fences and warnings and they try pretty hard. They put up fences now in a lot of places to stop you doing anything that's even like remotely dangerous, you know, getting near a cliff edge or something when you're on a mountain. But I gotta say, Tasmania already is feeling a little bit different than the rest of Australia. <laughs> and case in point, this is like the official hiking track up Cradle Mountain. And that is the path right there going up that collection of boulders, which could easily move. <laughs> like, And then this is kind of what we just came across. Here's Katie coming across the kind of, this is one of the easier sections, but that is the official hiking trail here to get to the summit of Cradle Mountain. I have to say, I'm impressed. This is one of the most exposed little rock scramble hikes I've ever done anywhere in the world. I had no idea. These boulders are huge, but... Uh, this is definitely a bit sketchy. I'm using all four hands and feet, you know, to keep myself glued to these rocks, so. So there we go, the summit of Cradle Mountain. This is epic. And then below me, that hiking track we can see, that's where we're going this afternoon. So we're gonna be camping somewhere over there under Barnyard Bluffs, I guess. And you can see this is just breathtaking. This is actually one of the best day hike bang for your bucks that I've ever done in my whole life. Anyway, even in the Yukon, even in Alaska, this, this totally rates, this is epic. And like I said, I'm shocked there haven't been any fences, any signs, nobody trying to stop me hurting myself. I gotta say, Cradle Mountain, I'm impressed. This is just the beginning of the overland track. I cannot wait to see what comes next. Congratulations, Katie. Well done. We made the summit. Onwards and onwards. I wish we could stay up here all evening, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> All right, so it feels like it's been a huge day with that side trip. So we found this amazing place to camp. I'm standing on the main trail right now, and then this is where we're gonna be camping for the night with this view out over the valley. And you can camp anywhere you want on the overland track. There are official campsites, there are even huts that everyone's really excited to stay in, but we prefer to tent camp. Why would we wanna be crammed in a hunt hut with a bunch of strangers when we could be out here camping like this? with our own beautiful spot. So we've obviously put our warm clothes on, we've just sort of set the tent up ready to go. And Katie over here is getting dinner ready. Katie, do you want to tell the fine people what we've got on the go for dinner? Sure. We have my favorite first night of camping uh, dinner, which is ramen. And I love ramen at the best of times, but um, these are just some ramen packets one of my roommates once suggested to me, and I think they're awesome. Uh, they're a little bit spicy, which I really like, especially when you're hiking. Um, but my favorite part about day one is that it's really great to bring in a little bit of fresh food. So um, obviously we're, we're out here for eight nights, so we can't bring a ton of fruit and vegetables with us. Uh, but I love bringing broccoli. Uh, it's nice and it holds up pretty well in your pack. You can squish it down and it always kind of bounces back in its happy little tree form. So this time we actually have broccolini. Um, so I cut up a whole bunch of broccolini because there's a broccoli shortage right now in Australia. Um, and I, we also had a barbecue chicken yesterday. So we brought a tiny bit of leftover chicken. We got it really cold in the fridge uh, before we set out. So we're gonna add chicken to our ramen. And this is a little bit crazy, but I also <laughs> love hiking in fresh eggs. And so I've actually, uh, I ripped off part of the, the egg carton and I put it in a Ziploc baggie and then I actually wrapped my toque in it and I put it in the top of my pack to really keep them protected. But eggs are pretty sturdy unless you actually drop something on them. They tend to uh, hold up pretty well. So we'll crack an egg in once we've got the water boiling and that'll just help fill out the ramen. So even though it's instant noodles, uh, hopefully it'll taste really delicious. And I just find it a great salty uh, filling first night. Um, out on the trail. So that should be really delicious. And the last part of course is I also brought some green onions that we're going to sprinkle on top because I love garnish. So uh, we'll wait and see how this water boils and then we'll come back and show you the final product. Wow. 
Wow, what an incredible day. It has been great. Dinner was phenomenal. And we've got some clouds rolling down off Cradle Mountain that are going to engulf us soon. So I just wanted one last glimpse around. Look at the light out over the valley. This place is absolutely beautiful. We are probably going to climb into bed pretty soon. Both of us are pretty wiped out. Start it all again tomorrow morning. Until then, good night. Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful morning it is. We're just packing up camp here. We're drying a few things out. We got a fair bit of rain overnight, but we were perfectly warm and dry inside our tent. And it's about 7.30 or so, not a super early start or anything like that. We're just thinking about the day, actually a ranger just hiked out past us. And he mentioned that going up Barnyard Bluff is really worth it. It's only about a three hour side detour. And so that is that peak, that prominent peak there just below the tree branch you can see. And so we're kind of just debating whether we do that today, whether we just hike on and maybe even go for a swim in one of the lakes. So we'll see, we've just had breakfast. I've got a tea, Katie's got a coffee. Life is really good at the moment. Day number two begins. Let's hit the trail. Summit of Barnyard Bluff. This is seriously impressive. Not as scary or as intimidating as the summit of Cradle Mountain, which we can see right there in the distance. And you can see the track that we just hiked along to get here. This is well worth the side trip. Another 10 out of 10 bang for your buck. The view from up here is incredible. We can see the valley that we're gonna be hiking down for the next few days, basically that way, due south. We'll go past all of those mountains there that are in the distance. That's where we're headed with any luck. The weather stays what it is right now because this is fantastic. <laughs> Gonna enjoy this for as long as we can before we scurry back down, grab our packs and keep moving south. One way to find out. Oh. 
So we had a quick lunch break at Valley of the Waterfalls. It was beautiful. We've been moving really well on day two today. And there's this beautiful little alpine lake here. But Katie being Katie, she's really excited. We're gonna do a three kilometer side track that away and get out to a lake called Lake Wills. It's the one we could see when we were on the summit uh, earlier today. And before we head off on a side trail, we've just put our packs down because obviously hiking without your pack is a magical thing. And we've covered them up like that because they have birds here called currawongs. You can think of it like a raven or a crow, but they figured out how to open zips on people's packs. So if you leave your pack exposed, the birds will open the zips to get in there, to get your food out, to steal all your trash and all that kind of stuff. So they say it's a pretty big deal. Make sure your pack is really like animal proof. These birds, and it's funny, at most of these spots where we've dropped our packs, there've been a couple of birds just hanging around. You can tell they're just like waiting to come and pounce as soon as we leave. And actually there's a sign right here. I just saw it that says, protect your pack because these birds are uh, troublesome. <laughs> so anyway, we're off on another short side detour and with any luck, well, I mean, Katie's gonna go for a swim. And we'll see if Dan is or isn't. I'm not quite as attuned to the cold water as Canadian Katie, but I do my best. So yeah, day two, looking forward. A swim will be epic if we can jump in, even if we're just kind of in and out. And then after that, back here, grab our packs, and we have about an hour to go down to Windermere. There's a cabin, there's a lake. That'll be where we call home for tonight. So starting right now, really warm actually. The sun's been out for the last hour or two. But we did hear the weather forecast still says tomorrow is going to be a different beast. So while we can, we're going to enjoy it. Oh, back at the very beginning. It was I feel like a gremlin to cut Peter Mark from midnight. Oh, oh. good. Not muddy. So here we are, Will Lake. This looks absolutely gorgeous. I was worried it was gonna be muddy, but it isn't. Looks like sand. We're pretty warm from our hike. We're going for a swim. We didn't bring anything to swim in. So GoPro off, jumping in the lake. Oh, so we've arrived in camp after a 22 kilometer day, set up the tent and here we're at one of the cabins. There's a cabin just over that way with like a bathroom and all that. Um, so we're actually set up on a tent pad, which is pretty nice because it means there isn't mud and all that kind of stuff. And you can see we've spread out a lot. All of our food just exploded out of our bags. We're both pretty exhausted and foot sore after a 22K day. So we basically just collapsed here and have been cooking and eating ever since. So Katie is just finishing up dinner. Ooh. What's for dinner tonight, Katie? Well, uh, as you all know, we've been living in the Jeep. So a lot of our food came from uh, one of the supermarkets here in Australia. So we picked up this great uh, vegan mac and cheese. I believe it's bacon, smoky bacon flavored. Fake, oh. fake bacon, I have to add. Fake bacon. Um, I was really sad Dan read the nutritional information and found out there was nutritional yeast in it. So I was, I was hoping that he wouldn't find that out until after eating it. And then uh, to make it a little bit healthy, we've added some dehydrated peas um, and then hot buffalo style tuna for some additional protein. And we're really thankful because the macaroni and cheese didn't taste that good. Um, but then we added some butter, some instant mashed potatoes and some Parmesan cheese. And you know what? It's it's actually pretty tasty. It is pretty tasty, I agree. The pretend bacon flavoured mac and cheese, I do not recommend. But the smoky barbecue flavoured uh, tuna, I do recommend. So all in all, this is dinner. This is our spot. 
This is great. Uh, the weather hasn't turned yet, but the forecast still says the weather's going to turn. So, oh yeah, we can still see Barn Bluff over there in the distance, that mountain we were on top of earlier today. So day two has been incredible, better than day one. More wilderness, more beautiful. Uh, we saw one little snake, which we just read in a guidebook, was actually poisonous, a white-lipped something something. I don't know the name of it. But yeah, day two has been incredible. I cannot wait to just keep exploring this trail. See you guys in the morning. Good morning, everyone. Day number three is underway. We are just breaking camp. And you can see it rained heavily overnight. It kept me awake for a couple of hours. But actually, the weather is pretty good. The sun just broke through 30 seconds ago for the first time today. So we're optimistic that we're not going to get sopping wet today. Although the trail notes do say that we're walking through basically a swamp. So wet feet, I think, are guaranteed. Um, but our usual plan is once we have our packs on, we've got our rain covers on them, we may as well just keep walking. Once you're wet, you're not going to get any more wet. So that's the plan for today, a hiking we will go. Um, there is one big side trip today up a mountain called Mount Oakley, which is spectacular. We've been seeing it in the distance for a few days now. And so we have a we have a 17 kilometer day without the side trip. I think with the side trip, it'll be like 22 kilometers, same as yesterday. So it would be a huge day if we did it and it'll really depend on the weather. If it's crazy windy and raining sideways, I don't think we want to go to the top of a mountain. But if it's like it is right now, I could be convinced. So with that, we're on the trail. Pack's starting to feel a tiny bit lighter now that we've eaten so much food and used up quite a bit of stove fuel. Uh, poor Katie doesn't really have much of the food and none of the stove fuel, so her pack isn't getting any lighter with each day that we go by because she has the tent. Uh, but that's how it goes. We'll redistribute weight at some point. And last night we walked out here looking for a wombat. Check out these flowers, they are just gorgeous. These ones are really pink, and then the rest of them are all white, except for those ones over there in the middle that are pink. No idea what they're called, no idea why. Oh yeah, and we're walking through a region today too where they say, watch out for tiger snakes. And tiger snakes are very poisonous, they do kill people. So if I see one, I'll be sure to let you know.
All right, guys, so it is lunchtime on day three, and we've come to the old Pelion hut, which is right behind us here. We're just sheltering behind it because of the wind, and we just went for a swim. Katie jumped right in the river, a really nice, beautiful, deep spot, and I kind of got in about three quarters, I guess. And so now we've just cooked up some lunch. So we got the little Trangia stove that we love so much. We've got creamy bacon carbonara, and then like a lentil mushroom everything soup. And so it's really nice to eat some hot food. It's not cold, but it's also not hot. And so we're just kind of relaxing with, uh, it's been a 17 kilometer day or something. So we're sort of ready to be off our feet. And uh, we're just coming up with a plan kind of, it isn't raining, the weather's actually not terrible. And in the distance directly where I'm facing, that mountain we can see, that is Mount Oakley that we're thinking about going up today. So the plan is finish off lunch here, head over to the camping area, set up our tent and throw our gear in the tent and then probably set out and try and climb Mount Oakley this afternoon uh, if the weather holds, if it doesn't thump rain. So in the meantime, we're just going to snack down on some delicious lunch. Hot food is good food. And then we'll be out hiking again, but without our packs. So that'll be nice. Once again, Australia couldn't help with its uh, over cautiousness and risk adverseness. Although I do love these signs. I mean, look at this little dude falling off the cliff. That's pretty good. We are in an alpine environment, so we've got to watch out for the weather. And we are going for a substantial level of risk today. Substantial. We are not protected from natural hazards, such as cliffs, falling tree limbs, limbs and extreme weather. Wow, this sounds like the good stuff. Also, I just love the Tasmanian government logo down here. That is a Tasmanian tiger or a thylacine. And over here, we've got a Tasmanian devil. Yes, those are real, the character from the cartoons. That is a real animal here, Tasmanian devil. I'm hoping we get to see one. So we just finished the hike up Mount Oakley and uh, you could see from the top there the rain was coming and now the rain is here. And that's the mountain behind me there. Super beautiful right now in the mist. It almost adds to the whole atmosphere. Uh, and I'm really happy Katie convinced me that we should put up the tent before we set out hiking. So right now our tent is set up, our bags are in the tent, so everything is bone dry, which thank you Katie, good decision. So we're just walking back, it's like 7.30 or something. It's been another epic day. We've been on the trail for another 12 hours, about 22 kilometers. And feeling pretty foot sore at the moment. It's definitely time for dinner. So I don't know what's in store. We have a few pasta meals. So we're thinking we'll probably have a pasta meal tonight, just so we don't have to have two of them in a row later. And that concludes day three on the Overland Track. What a day it has been, and I definitely am feeling it now. We were just saying today, maybe is the day where we shift from being like really sore and not used to everything to kind of our body adjusts and then our packs are getting a little bit lighter. And so hopefully by tomorrow we're like over the hump and everything just goes well. Uh, the weather still looks horrendous, basically says up to five centimeters of rain tomorrow during the day. So we're trying to strategize what does that mean for us, whether we have a rest day tomorrow, whether we just push through it, we don't actually know. We'll probably just see how we feel in the morning and go from there. That's our usual plan of no plan. Until then, we've just got another 15 or 20 minutes like this until we're back at our cozy, hopefully warm and dry tent. So until tomorrow morning, sleep well. Let's start another day on the Overland Track. <laughs> 